are all the supplies you're going to need for your frosting color wheel. First off, you're going to need something to put your frosting on. 12 of them total. Now, I personally am not a big fan of Nilla wafers, so I just got some shortbread cookies. You could do cupcakes, Nilla wafers, any type of cookie. You could just mix the colors and put them on a plate randomly. I do not care. You also need some sort of food coloring. Now, it does not matter what type you choose. You could do the classic old school liquid type, or you could do the gel food coloring. Does not matter as long as you have yellow, blue, and red. Those are the three colors you have to have. You need some sort of frosting. Now, I decided to be lazy and buy a tub of frosting. Uh, if you wanted to be fancy, you are welcome to make your own. It does not matter what type, as long as it is a white frosting. Sorry, you can't do chocolate, because we need to be able to see the colors well, so we need it to be white. Okay, you're also gonna need at least three containers. These are gonna be where I make my three base primary colors. You're probably gonna want something else to mix your frosting on. Could be a bowl. I'm just gonna do them in little piles on this small plate. You're also going to want a spoon for scooping out your frosting, and then you could use a spoon or a knife or something for mixing of your colors. I definitely recommend having a paper towel nearby as well. Alright, so let's get started. First thing I want to do, open up my frosting. Alright, so I'm going to split my frosting into my three containers. I'm going to use my whole container of frosting just to make my life easier. You could probably do this with a smaller amount or a lot bigger, it just depends on how much you want to make. Now I'm just going to try to eyeball it and guess how much a third is for each one. I want them to be fairly even, the best I can. Now that we've got all of our frosting out, you need to make your primary colors. So remember, our primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. Now we want these colors to be really bold. I'm going to use the gel food coloring just because I think it should give me a brighter color, but remember, you can use the liquid, it's totally fine, but you need your colors to be really bright. So I'm going to put in a lot of my color into it because I want my colors to be bold. Now the gel food coloring is not as strong as liquid. If I was going liquid, I'd do a few drops mix, few drops mix and go from there. So I'm gonna mix up my three colors nice and bold. Voila, by the power of movie magic, I have my three colors done. I would really recommend get three different spoons or something to mix your containers with because you want to make sure the colors don't get contaminated with each other. Like I see a little bit of blue got into this yellow and I'm going to scoop it out. Okay, so these three primary colors can make all 12 of the colors we are trying to make. Now I'm going to show you some tricks on doing this. First off, we need to know which colors are strongest and which are weakest. Yellow is a really weak color. So what that means is it can very easily get overpowered by other colors. Red and blue are much stronger. Blue is the strongest. That means it takes over really quickly. So when we're mixing colors, we have to keep that in mind. Since yellow is so weak, we always wanna start with our yellow and then add in our other color. So that way it doesn't get overpowered as fast and we can control it. That's gonna help make sure we don't run out of our yellow too fast. Okay, the first color I want to put down is obviously just my primary colors. Let's make our lives easier. Make sure you mark down your primary colors by putting it onto one of your objects, whatever it is, your cookie, your cupcake, your Nilla wafer, whatever it happens to be. Make sure you put down some of your primary color before you move on. We're gonna start with our oranges. So, if we look at that mixing guide that I gave you, oranges are yellows and reds. Now I'm gonna show you a trick. I'm gonna show you a way that we can make all of our colors from one spot instead of having to make three different messes. So we're gonna make yellow orange, orange, then red orange. So I want to take about half of my yellow, maybe a little bit less because I put a lot of frosting in. But I want a really big pile of my yellow because we'll make our yellow orange first and then we're just going to add to it to make our regular orange. Make sure you clean off the thing that you're mixing with. I'm even going to take my paper towel, wipe down my knife. 
So, if we look at the guide, we know making yellow orange is a lot of yellow with just a tiny bit of red. Now, I really emphasize the tiny bit. Remember, yellow is a lot weaker than red is. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of red. See, I mean, look at the sizes of that compared to that. Now I'm gonna mix this in to make our yellow orange. Now I'm gonna to try to mix all of my colors on this one plate, so I'm gonna to try to keep my pile fairly small. So you can see that red takes over the yellow really fast. That's why we gotta do just a little bit at once. If I put in too much red, I can always add more yellow. So I wanna mix this all up. Now looking at it, I wanna compare it to the slides that has a color wheel. I think I put in too much red. So I need to take a second and put some more yellow on it. So I wanna clean off my container or my knife, scrape it, wipe it. I'm gonna add a bit more yellow. So you really see how yellow is weak. You need a lot of it compared to the red. Mix that in. There we go. So I know the video, it's hard to see the color really nicely, but trust me, that is a nice yellow orange. I'm going to put that onto another one of my cookies. But we see I have a lot left over. That's good because I'm gonna make orange from this same pile. That way I don't have to start over again. So I put down my yellow orange. Now, to turn this yellow orange into orange, all I gotta do is add a little bit more red to it. It's that simple. So I'm gonna start small, little blob of red, and mix that in. I think I need a little bit more red still. Wipe off my container. I don't wanna contaminate my red. Let's grab a little bit more. A little bit more, mix it in. So we want the orange to look like a pumpkin. Nice, bright, bold pumpkin. There we go, nice. I like the orange, so I can put it on a cookie. Oh yeah. Now I definitely want to check and look. Do my two oranges look different? Good. They always want to make sure each one looks different as you go. Now for the last of our orange, our red orange, it's the same thing again. I'm just going to add in a little bit more red. Whew, I'm making a mess here. This is definitely a messy project. Now since red orange has a lot of red in it, I'm going to take a pretty big dollop of red to mix into this. There we go. Now the red orange should not look like red, but it should also not look like the orange. It should look like its own color. Once you like it, put that on your thing. Cookie, whatever. All right, now I definitely made way too much frosting, but you know what? That's more for me later. I'm just gonna save that and kind of scoot it off to the side. Okay clean area of the plate. I need to clean off my knife because it is contaminated. Let's go on to the, let's go purples. I haven't made a cookie with just my red yet, so I want to make sure I get that onto a cookie to mark down that color. So we got to get all 12, that includes the primary. So I'm going to frost my red. There we go. Now, for purples, it's going to be mixing red and blue. Now blue is a little bit more powerful than red, so I'm gonna start with a pile of red first. Now, as we saw for my orange, I got a little carried away with the last one. I don't need to make as big a pile. All depends on how much you're frosting and how much frosting you wanna put on that object. I think I'm gonna go about there. Good. So I got the red. Now. We're gonna start with red purple because that's the closest to red. Clean off my knife. Red purple is a lot of red, just a little bit of blue. Remember, blue is powerful, so just take a little bit at a time and mix it in. Nice, that worked out perfect. Cookie, frost. 
just like we do with our oranges, double check that it doesn't look the exact same as the one you did before. So does it look like my red? No, it does not. So we've done red purple, now on to regular purple. Clean off my knife. I know regular purple is gonna have more blue in it. So again, take it all up, mix it in. Now you're probably not going to get the super vibrant purple like we're used to seeing. I'm sure on this video, it even kind of looks brown. Trust me, it is not brown. It is a purpley color, but that just has to do with the quality of pigments we use to make our primary colors. Has nothing to do, to do with you making the color wrong. It's just the material that we're using. If you have really high quality pigments, like really high quality paints, that's how you get a better color. But this is a purple if you look at it in the right light. Last up of our purples is our blue purple. Blue purple is a lot of blue, just a little red. So I'm gonna take a big dollop, mix that in. There we go, nice blue purple. All right, we got four cookies left. As you can see, none of them look the same. They all look different. That's exactly what we wanted to do. So we got blue and then the greens left. So as before, clean off my knife. I might lick my frosting on this one. First thing, we want to frost just our regular blue cookie. Remember you gotta include that primary. Okay, blue is frosted. Now, to make our greens, we know that's going to be yellow and blues. Now, we know that yellow is really weak, blue is really strong. So we're gonna slowly add the blue into the yellow. Since this is my last set of colors, I'm just gonna mix it straight into the yellow and not even use my plate. Let's make life easier. Okay, so tiny bit of blue. I really can't emphasize this enough, guys. It's tiny, like this tiny blob of blue compared to all of this yellow. Trust me, blue overpowers fast. So let's mix this in. We want this to be our yellow green. So it should look like lime green. Oh yeah, perfect. Let's frost a cookie. This cookie got a bit of orange on it, get off. There we go. So we got our yellow green. Notice it is different than the regular yellow. Perfect. Now to go into green, we want to add a little bit more blue. Again, a little bit at a time, guys. Blue is so much stronger than the yellow. So I'm going to start with a blob about this big. No, that's not bright enough for me. I want it to look like grass. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. So we're mixing colors takes time and practice. You might have to do a little bit at a time, check it, nope, add more. A little bit more, check it, then maybe it's good. It's not going to be perfect the first time every time. I think I still want some more blue in that. It's not quite really grassy enough for me. So I'm gonna add a bit bigger blob. Alright, say so that finally got it. Our grass. Put that on a cookie. Awesome. Now we got one color left. It is our blue green. We more commonly think of this as turquoise. Turquoise is a lot of blue and a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to take a pretty big blob of blue for this one. It's going to seem extreme, but I want to make a nice bolt turquoise. Nope, still not enough. More blue. Nope, still not enough. More blue. I'm gonna need two blobs. And that's still not enough. You know what I might do? I think I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and mix it in with all of the blue I have left. That's gotta be enough, right? I think I want to add a little bit more of my green into it. So you guys see, some colors are going to be easier than others. Some are going to be harder. That's okay. 
it takes time, takes practice. There we go. Now we got a turquoise. Put that on my last cookie. Boom. So my plate isn't quite big enough, so I'm gonna have to arrange my cookies on something else. And there we go. We see I got the, all 12 colors in the correct order. No two look alike. And it really shows them how the colors are mixed. Now, a lot of people always ask me, how do you make brown? Well, for those that are curious to make brown, all you gotta do is take the three primary colors and mix them together. So, if I took two of my colors that I'd already finished, let's say my blue green, and I have a bit of my red orange left, that's going to be even amount of all three colors. If I mix those together, that is how you get your neutral or your brown. So if you ever wondered how to make brown, it's all three primaries together. You see it? And it'll get you a nice brown. That's how you make your neutrals. You do not have to include brown in your project. So once you finished all 12 colors and you arranged it, take a picture and turn it in. That is a frosting color wheel project. Once you've finished your project, you've taken your picture for evidence. Enjoy your project. It's going to be delicious. Ow.